Hey, 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 it is Curly Shirley, and I am here to do another tutorial in Ting. Uh, today, we're starting with a tropical sunset. So all of the products that I'm using are from Dollarama. So I'm going to get started with my canvas. Um, it is six by eight. I'm going to tape about mm, one third of the way from the bottom. I'm going to start by spreading out all of my paints. Um, so the colors that I'm using are pretty much white, yellow, orange, a light red, a darker red. I'm going in with my white first to start on my horizon line. That is why we put the tape down for those of you who do not know. Um, and I'm pretty much going to add a little bit of yellow. So it's going to be a very, very, very light yellow. Um, and that's gonna sort of signify the sun coming up from the horizon. Moving on, I'm going to go uh, a little bit darker a little bit more yellow the higher up that I go um, and pretty much try to blend that in. You want to make sure that you're using long brush strokes um, to kind of get the best result uh, as it will sort of help with the blending be a little bit more seamless. So I'm just going to go in with that. If you feel like there's not enough uh, light shining from the horizon line, you can always go in and add a little bit more of that white. So moving on, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow mixed with orange just to help with the gradient of it um, and sort of work that um, halfway through. So half of my brush would be on the white, half of it's gonna be on the yellow that I've blended up. Um, and then again, sort of like working that orange up. So the further up that you go, the more dense you want the next color to be so that it gives, again, that sort of gradient. Um, effect that's nice and seamless if it's not don't raise your blood pressure because it's just gonna help to make texture and dimension as you go along trust the process right okay so once I've got my orange in there I'm just gonna sort of touch up as I go as you guys can see like the strokes are kind of coming in and again they're not perfect but naturally the sky is not going to be completely perfect it's just going to sort of look like layers upon layers right so i'm going to go in do the same thing use the the darker color um, and blend that with or the darker color i was using which is the orange and blend it with the lighter red um, and sort of make that same gradient like effect and then as i kind of blend that in i'm going to go in with sort of just the straight red and work it in to the rest of the colors once i feel comfortable with that obviously after much much blending um i'm gonna go in with that darker red just at the top and sort of bring it down a little bit not too much i'm just putting it on the edge of my brush springing it or not springing it brushing it along the top and then sort of working it down a little bit um, if you feel like you use too much of a darker color, just try to add in the color like lighter. Um, and again, sort of like working it in and then I sort of don't know what I did there. Made a little bit too much streaks. I wasn't really feeling it. Um, so I ended up going in and trying to make some clouds. So pretty much what I did was I took the dark color um, or the dark line as sort of the basis or the shadow on the bottom of the cloud. And from there, I'm just sort of layering on um, brighter colors. So medium brush might be your best bet here because it will help you get a little bit more detailed or sort of like smaller bits. So... Again, I'm putting red at the bottom, so I'm going between the dark red and the lighter red at the bottom to show the shadow of the cloud, and then I'm sort of gonna build the lighter colors on top of that. So I'm gonna be going between the orange, the yellow, and the white. Obviously, the white would be the last step, right? So again, I'm going a little bit more based on expressionism. Um, so it's sort of whatever intuitively feels right. I like to kind of add a little bit of the yellow, then add the white. If I feel like I did too much, I blend it out or I add more of a darker color. I didn't want my um, clouds to be too, too fluffy just because it wasn't the vibe I was going for. That's what I was intuitively feeling. No fluffy clouds, flat, um, strung out clouds. If I could remember the name of them right now, I would tell you, but haven't the faintest clue so anyways i just keep sort of playing around with that playing around with it until i feel it looks good 
again like i'm saying like i'm going all by feeling you know what i mean um a quick trick to help you sounds a little bit weird but honestly trust the process if you squint your eyes you would be surprised like how much you can sort of start to see the picture come together the whole idea of painting is like you're just mm, layering on so many different tones and hues of different colors and sort of seeing the way that they relate to one another based off of how we see things through our eyes i'm getting straight art nerd here with you but pretty much just layer a bunch of things, squint your eyes, let me know how it goes, okay? So moving forward, I just decided to add a little bit more, um, you know, layers again um, in the sky just to give it a little bit more depth. I felt like it didn't have enough red. Funny enough, trusting that process, I ended up adding too much red, which I kind of brought down a little too close to the clouds. But again, like with more layering, I just added on a little bit of the lighter orange. Um, tad of yellow and sort of worked it in until uh kind of looked how i wanted it to look trust in the process yo trust the process so from there you're good to go on your sky next we're moving on to the water and obviously water has a little bit of a blue color uh, but it also has kind of like a gray uh I guess a cooler tone of blue right so this is why i'm deciding to use the purple um it's just something that helps to add a little bit of depth and lets you know that that's water versus the sky the sky does reflect the water but the water itself is i guess not an object but it's something right so it wouldn't really make sense to just do it exactly like how the sky is which is why i added that little bit of um blue so once I kind of filled that color in, um, I ended up taking the tape off and then I sort of went in on the horizon line. I decided to do it this way just because when you get to the horizon line, it's a lot of pressure, you know, you got that almost white yellow there. So I just decided to leave it on and when I felt comfortable enough is when I sort of moved my way up. Um, after that, I went in with the dark red and sort of just went over it. It was sort of dry, sort of not. You can tell that it's not completely dry because it's starting to pick up stuff, but it's all right. I'm just trusting the process. Um, going forward, I'm still using my large brush. I end up switching to my medium brush because I find it to be easier um, because I'm trying to get sort of lines that mimic waves of water right um so i'm going in again with that dark color that i used for the base um and then i end up scratching that going with my small brush i'm pretty much doing the same thing so once i add in the dark layers i go in with the lighter red because we already have the dark red as the base um, and then i kind of add a little bit of orange um, a little bit of yellow so the key here is like you're kind of making lines but they're going to be broken up lines when you think about waves in the ocean they're sort of like broken up lines i really wish i had another way to describe it but when you are trying to find a way to put things together um, whether you're like making a composite or you're just painting freehand like your best bet is to put things into weird shapes make weird sounds squint your eyes bam you got a masterpiece on your hands so that's pretty much what i did i just went in with all the same colors that we had in the sky including that sort of dark purpley color mixed with the blue um just to add a little bit of dimension so go go by your intuition go by what feels good that's really what this is about um you're kind of just rolling with it trust the process um so yeah i did this for quite a little bit it was lots of dragon that's kind of what i'm doing just dragging the brush um in small lines picking it up here and there and i think it turned out pretty good so the next step was i got my medium brush and a little bit of black i sort of just colored in the corner there to signify some kind of rock land mass let's just call it okay um and then i went in and i drew a tree trunk i'm pretty much gonna do a palm tree um which i'm sure you guys can see because you've seen the preview <laughs> um but i pretty much went in there and i made a trunk i made this one a little bit funky just to sort of spice it up didn't know what was going on there um and then for the next one i sort of just made a regular shaped one that was hanging out um 
Next, I'm going to go in and do the palms. This was not easy, I'm not going to lie. Um, but your best bet is to go from the top and sort of drag down until... And as you sort of drag down, you obviously release the pressure, right? So similar to like when you're drawing grass or hair, you kind of whoosh, whoosh. Listen, make the sound. Tell me, does it work? I kid you not. I kid you not. So anyways, I sort of went in... I'm just going with the flow, trusting the process, because, again, it is a really weird hand motion, I'm not going to lie. It's not my first time doing them, but I'm definitely not as comfortable as I would like to be with it, right? Um, so anyways, I went in and made a second land mass on the other side just to sort of draw the viewer's attention towards the middle, the water, the horizon, uh, and then obviously the tree palm palms that will be hanging, right? Up at the top, sort of middle-ish, you know what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, once I did that, I ended up going in with the exact same colors that I used to highlight the clouds and the waves. Um, so it's sort of a common theme here, right? You're just showing different ways that the light is reflecting um, with, with similar colors, pretty much. Once I felt like that looked okay, um, to just give a little bit of a break, I went in and made some land masses. So again, I used the same colors to highlight. And when I did this, I was thinking about the light source. So I'm thinking of the light mainly coming from sort of the, the very, the smack dab middle there. The middle vertically and horizontally, um, which is why uh, you'll notice a lot of the things on my right hand side the light comes in from the left versus the left hand side the lighter colors or the highlights will be on the right because the light source is coming from the middle um, and yeah so once I felt comfortable with the highlights there I ended up going in and using the black to make a little bit of birds three a few couple whatever you want to call it um, and that's pretty much it. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope that this was helpful. Um, comment down below uh, if there's anything else you'd like a little bit of help on in terms of painting. Um, don't forget to follow me. Yada yada, you know the deal. And you can hashtag tutorial and ting so that you can show me all your masterpieces. Thanks. Take care.